Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to an all-new episode of The In-Between with Elizabeth Cheney. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cheney. <laughs> welcome to the show. Happy you're here. Hope you all are doing great. If there's anybody new listening, welcome. Welcome to the pod. I'm very excited to be here. I feel like I haven't been here in a while, but it's really only been a week. Well, technically, it's been two weeks for me, really only a week for y'all. But either way, how was that episode last week with Brittany Crabb? I love her. She has such a fun energy. I told her, I was like, you're really into manifesting and and not just like that per se, but law of attraction, all those kind of things. So I think I'm going to have her come back on the podcast and, you know, we'll talk a little bit about religion, spirituality and things like that. So cool stuff. So today's episode, I have a lot to fill you guys in on just life stuff. I mean, nothing like dramatic, but hey, I want you guys to know who I am and to know that I'm a real human being and not some open AI, whatever the heck that chat, GBT, or whatever the heck it's called. I haven't even used it like I'm ever going to use something like that. I say that, but who knows where the future's going, but I'm not willingly going to sign up for open AI. I see it all over the web and AI everywhere, actually, but really what's got me tripping is like the filters that I'm seeing. I've only seen on TikTok, but it's pretty intense. So yeah, not a real big fan of filters anyways, because I'm kind of like, well, I don't want you to be like shocked when you see me in real life. (laughs) So I don't tend to use them. Try to be real. Hashtag real, real girl. Hey, no hate, no shade. Use filters. I mean, not to say I don't ever use them. Okay. This is not going to turn into a soapbox about filters to use or not to use. That's a whole other dialogue, other conversation. But all I'm saying is I want you to get to know the real me and not the open AI version of me. (laughs) All right, so as long as I haven't made this weird, let's get on with the show, shall we? So what's new in your world? What's new in mine? First off, inflation is just a piece of work, isn't it? I tell you what, going to the grocery store is starting to be triggering. I mean, everything is so expensive. Duh, Liz. Duh. Have you been watching the news? Well, first off, no, I haven't. But also, I don't live under a rock. Huh. <sighs> But I mean, the most ridiculous things are so overpriced, like a bag of chips, $5. And this isn't like the super organic, you know, they loved on the potato before they sliced it and like made sure the oil that they fried it in was super processed or excuse me, super unprocessed and filtered 12,000 times. I have no idea. I'm just talking about some basic lays. $5. $5. And I, I told my husband, I was like, I told Stan, you guys know who my husband is. Duh. I told Stan, I was like, I was looking at the prices and besides the ridiculous, like organic stuff, everything is in the four to $6 range. Cookies, crackers, vegetables, everything is four to $6. And that shit adds up. Of course it adds up, but I'm just saying what in the hell? When do we get a break? When does it stop? I mean, seriously, it is just very, very hard to get by. And I I say that with a giggle, but I also mean that seriously, not trying to ruin the mood of the podcast, just kind of trying to be real because I'm sure a lot of people listening are feeling the inflation woes, but either way, I'm, I'm over it. If anyone has any alternatives to grocery shopping, farmer's markets, I don't know if those are cheaper because I don't know, I've been to some farmer's markets and that shit ain't cheap. So just saying, but if anyone has any suggestions, if there's any subscription boxes or, or veggie subscriptions that you are a fan of that you recommend, let your girl know because I am tired of spending $5 on every single thing that I buy at the grocery store. Do you know the deodorant was $10? Like the organic special, you know, frou-frou kind, like the special, really nice, expensive, whatever, bougie brands, if you want to call it that, they were cheaper than what Dove was selling. $10? For deodorant? Are these people out of their minds? Ugh, seriously. I just need to move to a bunch of land and make my own, grow my own, and just, I don't know, be miserable. (laughs) I need people. Just kidding, I probably wouldn't be miserable, but everyone has their path and that one's not mine. At least not right now. Maybe not necessarily down the road. Anyways, whoa, where are we going with this? Inflation, grocery shopping, no fun. So, Hopefully none of you are triggered like I am and I just went into a whole spiel about that. But if you're feeling inflation, I'm with you. F this shit. (laughs) Let's get over it. Can we just all have a community garden? I'm down like an in-between garden. Raise your hand if you're with me. Everyone's hands are up. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. 
Also, in another update, guess what? It's the week of my photo shoot. I'm really excited. I think I've mentioned this on the pod. If not, this is very awkward because I just prepped this up thinking you guys all knew what I was talking about. But yes, I have my upcoming photo shoot is coming this Friday. So hopefully with this, we'll launch the website in the next like month or so. Well, month after I get the prints, obviously they have to be edited, but very excited. So I've been kind of taking care of myself a little bit. Well, I'm always taking care of myself, but you know, treating myself, I should say. Treating myself, getting a facial, going to get my nails done, even though it's really hard to treat yourself to these kind of things because your grocery bill is like almost your rent. But hmm, oh, yeah, sorry, not going to go back down that road. So like I was saying, I am very excited. I got a facial, get my nails done. I'm doing everything. I'm getting the full works. I get my hair and makeup done the same day because if I'm going to spend this money to look good and create a brand or at least a branding shoot, then, well, not sure if my my makeup skills are going to cut it. So treat myself, treating myself, and I will just not hang out with anybody for the next few weeks. It's all good. It's all good. Speaking of hanging out with people, I went to this event this past weekend It was, I don't want to call it like a networking, I mean, it was a networking event. Absolutely. It was totally a networking event. I think I was going to say I was going to call it an influencer event. That, I don't think it was. Networking, absolutely. Anyways, I went with one of my girlfriends, Courtney, and it was really, really cool because we got to learn how to make charcuterie boards. Like they had this badass chick there who makes these very impressive charcuterie boards. And that was what the lesson was on. And she, the, the person who hosted it is a boudoir photographer. So that was really cool. But most importantly, This woman is so legit. She starts this, her session, like this networking event she was hosting. Her name's Megan O. She's a photographer. She starts this whole event with telling all of us, and most of us are strangers. I think a few people that were there were clients or they came with the charcuterie person, Andrea. But what's so cool is she started this event talking about how amazing all of us women were. She didn't even have to know us to know how amazing we were and that everyone deserve to recognize their full worth and to know the value they bring as a woman and that she just wanted to let us know. And I'm just saying that is speaking to my heart, speaking to my love language. I mean, this woman just starts talking about worth and self-image and self-respect and self-love. And this is just her greeting. Oh my God, I loved her. Needless to say, I signed up for a boudoir shoot. (laughs) Because, you know, win in Rome, win in Rome. Thankfully, I have a few months to get my ass together. Hey, treat yourself, but also, why not? I'm sure I'll look back on this in in years and decades from now and being like, damn, girl, look at you. So why not? Why not? This is for me. This is for me, not for my husband. It's for me. And he gets to enjoy it too, but it's for me, really. And speaking of it's for me, I mentioned I got a facial. I haven't had a facial in, I don't even know how long, years, definitely years. And I was never really a facial gal because, I don't know, skincare... That whole world is overwhelming as hell to me, and it all just seems very expensive and unattainable perfection. So I'm just like, man, I'll just stick with my my Sephora products. Nothing wrong with that. But I went because I I really, you know, I struggle with hormonal acne. I'm sure if you've been listening to the pod, you know this. And I wanted to give my face just a pick-me-up before I have this photo shoot this week. So I go to this really nice spa in Decatur, and I get a facial, and it is feeling so great. My face is a little red and splotchy at the moment because she did some like extractions, whatever they want to call them that. But I just want to say for any of you listening and you have the means, you want to take care of yourself, you want to treat yourself, you deserve it, you've been working hard, you've been stressed out, go get a facial. They're not too, too expensive. I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Go get a facial. It'll make you feel good. It's relaxing smells good. I don't know. It's just treat yourself. I feel great (laughs) because the time change this past weekend is kicking my ass. Let me tell you, I feel like I've been hit by a freight train. I'm exhausted. And I mean, I was working that event all last week for work, so that did not help. And then Friday at work, once we were back, was a little crazy. I had a bunch of project deadlines that were due, so didn't really get to chill then. And then the weekend was hustle and bustle, trying to get things ready for the photo shoot. So I've been running on E for a while now. And after this photo shoot, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to, you know, pass out. But this time change in the midst of all of this has not been ideal. I'm exhausted. But I do want to say this. I am into the time change. And the reason I say this is if you've been listening or or if you haven't, you can go back and listen to, I don't know, somewhere around October, November, 
one of the episodes I talk about how much I love winter, which I do, I do, but how much I love the time change in the fall, the fall back, spring forward, fall back. And what I liked the most about that was how it got darker earlier. Well, now that I'm rocking and rolling and thriving the best of my abilities, not to say everything's perfect, but hey, you take what you can get and you get what you can't. I'm just kidding. That is definitely not my life motto. <laughs> uh, no, what I meant is, you know, I'm no longer depressy, stressy, lemon zesty. I am easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with that said, I like the longer days. I like that sunshine is still going on at 730, even if my internal clock's like, what's going on? This does not seem right. So I just want to say, I apologize. Although I do still love winter, I am mistaken. I would rather spring forward than fall back. Now let's table that and then circle back in October when the time changes again and see how I feel. (laughs) But just had to come out and say that I am getting my butt kicked, but I am loving the longer days. Although the weather's been kind of insane. It's been very beautiful and sunny and clear in Georgia, or at least in Atlanta, but freezing. So a little annoying because it looks like spring, but it feels like winter. And I'm kind of like, you pick one. Either give me clouds in winter or give me warmth in spring before the depths of hell of summer arrive. Because, Lord, a Georgia summer is not fun. At least for me. Oh, 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 and one more thing. With the time change and all this, spring's coming. woo So all the birds are Twitter-pated. We are now also getting into the time of the year where birds act bizarre as hell and everyone run for their lives. I think I did talk about ducks from last year. I'm I'm gonna revisit it. You can go listen to an episode, I think it was last March or last April. But if I've learned anything by living next to this big pond in the middle of the city, it attracts lots of wildlife, a lot of waterfowl. And birds are insane. And you know what, not just waterfowl. The ducks are insane too, don't get me wrong. But like mockingbirds, the little like gray birds, those dudes are crazy. They will attack you. Has anyone listening ever been attacked by a mockingbird? Literally walking Luna, those birds will attack her. It's been going on for the past few years that we've lived here. We'll walk her. There's like certain parts around the pond that you know it's like mockingbird territory, so you need to hustle and bustle and get your butt out of there. But these things will come in almost like slow motion. I don't even know how they glide so slow. And then they'll just jump on the dog's back. One time I was playing fetch with Luna in this big open grass spot. And this mother, this almost said, almost said the F word. I won't do it, mama. I will not do it this time for this episode. Okay, okay. But this dude comes flying at me eye level. I am eye to eye with this freaking bird. And I look at Stan, I'm like, is he going to get me? And I ducked and he swooped over me. But if I hadn't ducked, he would have definitely hit me. I'm not being dramatic. So everybody, look out for the psycho birds. They are crazy. I'm not just saying that. Take a nap. The time change is hard. And also, screw pollen. Also, while I'm at it again, screw inflation too. Mm. All right. So now that I've rambled and given you all these wonderful life updates for the past 15 or so minutes, I also want to talk about pop culture. (laughs) What's the big message today, Liz? Well, you know, there was once a time when I got push notifications on my phone from E! News. Yes, I confess. I loved celebrity gossip. And it's not that... I was, how do I say this? Not that I was obsessed, obsessed, but I always was into knowing what was going on. I'm sure we all have been guilty of that. Maybe we still are. And not to say I don't check in here or there. Plus, sometimes you just can't avoid certain news because it's everywhere. So with that said, I have a very soft spot for pop culture. I do love pop culture. I wish I could absorb and experience more of it, but I just feel like I'm too friggin' busy half the time to listen to all the podcasts and read all the books and watch all the shows and watch all the movies and listen to all the music, all while still somehow keeping my sanity. But I love pop culture. So there's been a lot of pop culture going on. A lot. Now, with this said, I say I love pop culture, but that does not mean I love reality TV. Now, with that said, that does not mean that I can't get into reality TV. I don't watch reality TV because I know that I will become addicted. 
I will become obsessed. I will fall right into it because anytime a girlfriend is watching like The Bachelor or Real Housewives or something, I don't even have to know who the people are. I can be seven minutes into this thing and I'm already invested. Maybe it's because I was an actor and I just, not that this is real acting or real TV, but maybe it's just like from the entertainment aspect, that's why I get into it. Either way, I am that person. I know me. I can only have so many vices and damn it, reality TV is not one of them. However, the main point I'm trying to get to all of this is I love pop culture. And so I want to bring a little bit of that into the in-between. I don't know if I have a pop culture episode once a month. Then again, pop culture is only as relevant as it is, you know, relevant. So some of that stuff might be a little not relevant. So do we add a pop culture corner into the pod during each episode? I don't know. You tell me. Is that something you're into? Actually, don't tell me that because if you say no and I do it anyway, well, hopefully you'll still find it entertaining. But all that said, pop culture and reality TV. And remember how I mentioned sometimes you just can't avoid things because, well, it's just everywhere? Case in point, Vanderpump Rules. I do not watch the show. Some of you who do, you're probably going, ooh, I know what she's about to talk about. And for those who don't watch the show, you're probably wondering, hmm, what is she about to talk about? Or if you're like me, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen the headlines. So Vanderpump Rules is a reality TV show that it was a spinoff off of, I think, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills from one of the characters, Lisa Vanderpump. Now, everything I'm about to say is going to make me sound like I'm a super fan, but I do want you to know that all it took was a few headlines and a few TikToks, and now I'm up to speed. However, I just have to kind of spill, shortchange a little bit of this drama and then give you the the bigger message or bigger wisdom from it, at least from what I took from it. So this whole cast, this show's been around for a long time, and there's still a few O's. Oh, geez. Okay. And there's these two dudes, one's named Tom and oh, the other one's named Tom too. Doesn't make that any more confusing. So one Tom was married to this girl named Katie and they divorced last year and they've been together for like 13 something years, 13 something like that's, you know what I mean? 13 or something like that years. The other Tom was with this girl, Ariana on the show for like, I don't know, nine years, something like that. So Tom and Katie get divorced last year. Tom and that girl Ariana are still together. Come to find out, and apparently this is all playing out on the cameras as they they film the new season, so that's horrible, knowing that all this drama and probably horrible shit to the one girl is about to come out on TV, but that's what reality TV is, right? But the Tom with Ariana has been cheating on her since like last July with another chick who was once named Rachel but now wants to go by Raquel who's on the show as well, who was also good friends with her, who was also trying to diverge anyone from knowing that her and the other Tom, Ariana's Tom, were together. She made out with the other Tom who just got divorced at a wedding. Are we following? Lots of drama. And I know reality TV comes with drama, but I'm just very, what's the word I'm looking for? First part, ew, so much drama, what the heck? I think cheating, especially to that level, is a coward cop-out. You are too scared. You're too weak and too much of a baby and don't have enough freaking self-worth, at least for the other person, to go tell them that you're not happy. So you cop out and you cheat. Secondly, how the hell does someone cheat that much in over half a year? So, I mean, last July, that's, we're like, what, nine months, eight, nine months? How do you cheat for nine months when you live with this person? I just... That is so much effort. And also what kind of sociopath you must be to hide that and be okay with it and still sleep with her and tell her you love her. Oh, so bring it all up just to be like, don't be disgusting. Ew. If you're cheating, you're thinking about cheating, check in to see if you're freaking happy in your relationship and be the grown up, be the mature, responsible person, be the right person and end things. I had somebody tell me a story the other day while we were talking about all this crazy drama about how they knew somebody who was married. Their spouse was cheating on them in the night by giving them like sleeping pills to make them drowsy and go to bed early and then sneak out and go screw around with some other person. What? And when they found out, it's always on the iPad. That's, oh, I forgot to mention that. So Ariana found out that this guy Tom was cheating on her via iPad text message. So my friend that was telling me their story, they found out via an iPad because no one thinks about the iPad. If that sucker is hooked up to iMessage, you might as well just dig yourself the grave because they're going to find out. Don't be skeevy. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. 
And you know what? You never know. Maybe they're like, oh, you want to have a throuple? Great idea. Whatever. To each his own. Row your boat the way you want to. All I'm saying is, ugh, don't be a douche canoe. Don't be a skeeve. I don't know what skeeve is. Skeevy. I don't know if I made that up. Whatever. Skeeve. It's kind of make up skeeve. What the hell am I talking about? All that's said and done. Gross. I'm sure it's going to make great TV because that is what friggin' reality TV is. Skeevy. Most of the time. Sometimes entertaining, but also heartbreaking because like this is legit. This is definitely not some storyline they created. And that girl, that woman, Ariana, like she's going to have to relive that and see all that. But if anything, maybe it gives her justice because screw the snakes. <laughs> all right. There's pop culture, pop culture boulder number one, and not necessarily related to pop culture, but also related to just content creation and just media and putting yourself out there. I am somewhere stuck between geriatric millennial and everything is content. Actually, I'm probably tipping more towards geriatric millennial and need to tip more towards everything's content. But dang, everything is content. Like when I am scrolling on Insta or TikTok or heaven forbid I say Facebook, oh, that makes me old, I know. But when you're scrolling and I see all these different videos and get ready with me's and all this kind of stuff, I'm just like, oh my God, do these people just have their phone on them all times? And the answer is probably yes. And I'm just like, how do you make it in this world? How do you break into the bubble? Whatever the bubble is. Oh, you just got a reality TV show and be a skeeve. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because not all reality TV stars are skeeves. There are actually some great people. But these people in question that I'm talking about, they're skeeves. Anyways, everything is content. Did I make myself clear? Everything is content. All right. Now that we have gone through all the things we have updated, we have talked about pop culture, specifically that one messy, crazy, disgusting, just intricate web of deceit. I also want to talk about the Oscars, specifically everything, everywhere, all at once. If you watch the Oscars or if you've read some headlines, the movie swept won all the awards, all the categories. I actually watched the movie on my way home from Colorado back in January, and it is a fantastic, fantastic movie. And it is about what it means to live, what it means to be a mother, to be a daughter, that relationship, how to break family, family systems, things like that. It's a beautiful, beautiful movie. And the two actors that start as the mother and father, the mother was Michelle Yao, and the father was Kei Hui Kwan, they both won their respective Oscar categories. So he won Best Supporting Actor. She won Best Actress. And she was the first Asian woman to win this award. So history making, groundbreaking, and much deserved because she's an incredible actress. She was in Crazy Rich Asians. She's also done all of the martial arts films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon from, I don't know, early 2000s, late 90s, whenever that was. She's been around for a while. But both of their speeches are so moving. And if you are feeling in a rut and you want some inspiration, I highly encourage you to go check them out. So Kehi Kwan's speech was talking about how he spent a year in a refugee camp. He was also the little boy in one of the Indiana Jones movies. I cannot remember which one, and I am cringing at the fact that I don't know this, but he was the little boy in one of those movies. So he's been around for a long time, but he wasn't really working for a while. And he says to dream big. Don't give up. And he got very emotional and he's talking about all the hard times and how many times he wanted to give up to, to make his mark in Hollywood. And here he was finally not giving up, standing there on that stage, holding an Oscar. His mom was watching and he just, oh, it was so beautiful, so emotional. You know, of course me, I'm crying because I cry, cry and everything, but whatever. I love that about me. I am who I am. And then I watched Michelle Yao as she wins Best Actress. And she's talking about, of course, how big of a deal this is, representation matters, and, and everyone that looks like her at home being able to see her stand in that place and, and, and win that accolade. And she says, dreams dream big, and dreams do come true. And I just kept thinking about dreaming. In both their speeches, both beautiful, so highly, highly, highly encourage you to go watch. But they talked about dreaming and how not to give up and to keep fighting because you deserve to be there. They deserved to win those awards. And I know I've talked about this multiple times across you know the past year or so on the podcast about dreaming big and how that can be terrifying, but it can be exhilarating at the same time. It's literally the world is your oyster. Better yet, the universe is your oyster. But society's like, no, stick to the status quo. So to see such a strong theme of dreaming and to see at the success of that, I was so inspired. 
And so I wanted to end today's episode. Yeah, we caught up. Yeah, we talked and shoot the shit and we talked a little bit about pop culture. But to close this episode out, I wanted to end it on dreaming and to say, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're working on. I don't know what's got you down. I don't know what's got you up. But if you have a dream, no matter how big or how small, whether it's to start a company, whether it's to start a family, whether it's to find a partner, whether it's to buy a house, the options are endless. I am saying don't give up. The journey may be hard and I am not gaslighting when I say all this. I am just saying don't give up because your dream is worth pursuing. Honestly, I'm getting to the point now with my dreams that I just kind of consider them my destiny, which is a very grandiose gesture. I know, but think about it. I dare you to check in with yourself and ask, what do you want? Maybe you're already pursuing it. Maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you're in the brainstorming stage. Maybe you're just loss and you're not sure what you want but this ain't it whatever this is dream imagine let your mind go see how far you can get there is no dream too big I truly believe that I had somebody recently tell me last week they said you know not everyone can cure cancer not everyone's gonna find the cure for cancer and you know they're right not everyone is but what kind of stunted mindset is that I personally am not gonna find the cure for cancer but maybe I might inspire thousands, if not millions of people to believe in themselves and to love themselves and to pursue everything that they can do, everything that they can aspire to do. I don't know. I'm going to try. And I have a feeling no matter where that path leads me, it's going to lead me to happiness because it's, it's the dream. It's the calling. So check in with yourself. Dream big, as scary as it is. And you know what? If for right now you want to keep it in just to yourself, then fine. You're allowed that. Some people are uncomfortable with big dreams, but don't lose sight of it. And as you marinate on it, as you sit there and just let it simmer in your brain and your heart, you'll feel more comfortable to talk about it. You'll feel more comfortable to talk about it. Things will start to happen no matter how small. Maybe it'll be big. The needle will move a little forward. Maybe it'll move a little back. Maybe you'll have a few setbacks. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Dreaming big is hard. Dreaming big comes with sacrifice, but dreaming big comes with huge rewards. I truly believe that. So for all my little lovers listening in, I believe in your dreams. And I hope deep down you do too. Because trust me, they're worth pursuing. And as I said in the words of Michelle Yao, dreams dream big. And dreams do come true. (laughs) All right. I think that's a good note to end on. I appreciate your time and listening to the In Between Podcast. And if you like today's episode, I would really appreciate it if you go rate, like, subscribe, follow on all the platforms, all the directories that you listen to podcasts. And hey, this episode's also going to be on YouTube, so go check it out. And if you want to connect with me, please do. I would love to connect with you all. You can find me on Instagram at in.betweenpod, pod as in podcast. That's my podcast Instagram. And then you can find me on my personal Instagram. Yeah, I'm sharing it. Come find me. Come be my friend. It's at Elizabeth Cheney underscore. And you can find me on TikTok at the In Between Podcast. So I will see all you fabulous people next week for an all new episode. And in the meantime, dream big, soar high. Remember the universe is our oyster and we are going to make the best of it because damn it, we deserve it. All right. I'm Elizabeth and I'll see you Wednesday. (laughs) Bye.